Many know the story of Hiro Onoda, the Japanese soldier who refused to believe World War II had ended and didn't surrender until February 1974. While he is frequently referred to as the last World War II holdout, there was another, lesser-known soldier who wasn't discovered until 10 months after Onoda. If you haven't already, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. By the 1970s, World War II had been over for nearly three decades. Young soldiers had returned home, started families, and entered middle age. But on December 18, 1974, news broke that one man had never gotten the memo of the war's end. Nakamura was stationed on the Indonesian island of Moritai in 1944, after a bloody battle in September of that year and had been presumed dead. Taro Nakamura was born on October 8, 1919 in Taiwan. He was a member of the Amis tribe, a Taiwanese indigenous group. Nakamura was raised in poverty in the island's mountains. He enlisted in the Takasago Volunteer Unit of the Japanese Imperial Army in November of 1943. Nakamura was stationed on Moritai Island in the Dutch East Indies soon after his enlistment. On September 15, 1944, American and Australian forces attacked the island in a mission that became known as the Battle of Moritai. The Japanese soldiers fought hard, but they were vastly outnumbered and suffered heavy casualties. Many of the remaining men surrendered to Allied troops, but some retreated into the thick jungle interior of the island. Nakamura's unit had been commanded to conduct guerrilla warfare in such circumstances. Over the next few months, many of the remaining members of the Japanese army were either captured, surrendered, or died of disease and starvation. But Taro Nakamura remained with a small group of stragglers, determined to continue following commands, even though they had no way to communicate with the outside world. With no record of Nakamura's surrender, the Japanese army declared him dead on November 13, 1944. It would be 30 years before his family learned the truth. Nakamura lived with several other Japanese soldiers on Moritai Island for 12 years. Since they had lost radio contact with their commanders, they had no idea the war had ended. When leaflets were dropped over the island in 1945, declaring that Japan had surrendered and the war was over, Nakamura and his comrades dismissed them as enemy propaganda. Nakamura believed the war was still ongoing due to airplanes that were constantly flying over the island. As the planes became more modern, he assumed there was an arms race occurring between the Allied and Axis powers. In reality, there was an Indonesian Air Force base nearby, and he was seeing daily practice flights. In 1956, Nakamura left his fellow troops and set off on his own. He built a small hut in a field and survived by growing sweet potatoes and eating bananas off of trees. He entertained himself by fishing and fiddling with an abacus he made. He cooked only when it was dark so enemies wouldn't see the smoke from his fire. At some point, he made a connection with a local man named Baikoli, from whom he received basic necessities and comforts like tea and coffee. This arrangement continued for several years until Baikoli died. In his will, Baikoli asked that his son continue to care for Nakamura. It is rumored that the son may have been the one who informed authorities of Nakamura's existence. Some reports suggest that Baikoli's son alerted authorities of Nakamura's location out of concern for his failing health. Others say a pilot happened to spot Nakamura's hut while flying over the island. Regardless of how the information came about, in November 1974, the Indonesian government was informed that there may be a holdout from the Japanese army living on the island, and they worked with the Japanese embassy to organize a search mission. Searchers waved a Japanese flag and sang the country's national anthem in an attempt to lure Nakamura out of hiding, and it worked. On December 18, 1974, Nakamura, then 55 years old, emerged from the dense forest. He was naked and exhausted, but in surprisingly good health. Nakamura was taken to a hospital in Jakarta, where he received a clean bill of health. Indonesian authorities then sent him back to Taiwan to be reunited with his family. When Nakamura returned home, he realized how much the world and his life back home had changed. His parents were dead. His son, who was an infant when he enlisted, was a grown man with four children of his own, and his wife, assuming he was dead, had remarried. When he had enlisted in the army in 1943, Taiwan had been a colony of the Japanese Empire. During his 30 years on Moritai, Taiwan had been placed under the governance of the Republic of China. Though Nakamura had fought for the Japanese Imperial Army, the Japanese government didn't think they should have to give him back pay on the pension he was entitled to, since he wasn't technically a Japanese citizen. 
This caused massive public outrage. Just several months earlier, Hiro Onoda, another Japanese army troop, was discovered in the Philippines and given his full benefits. The government argued that Onoda carried the rank of an officer, while Nakamura was only a private. They initially paid him 68,000 Japanese yen, the equivalent of around $227 at the time. After heated discussion in the media and more public outcry, the Taiwanese government donated a total of 4.2 million Japanese yen to Nakamura, a payout closer to the amount Hiro Onoda had received. His wife's new husband was willing to move out and let the couple reunite, but Nakamura didn't want to cause any chaos in their lives, so he bought an apartment nearby and spent time with them often. For the next four years, he lived quietly and peacefully with his family, and on June 15, 1979, he died of lung cancer. Despite spending nearly half of his life in isolation, Taro Nakamura left behind a legacy of a brave man and a dedicated soldier.